Hello everyone, so I made a few videos discussing diary room distribution and how that played a part in the visibility or lack thereof of the returning players and this video or the next two videos will be about the visibility and diary room distribution for all the pre jurors in Big Brother history. I'm only going to talk about the top 25 most visible in this video and the least 25 visible in the next one. So I'm just going to get right to it and go through them quickly. So at 25 is Jose from BB18, who has a diary room average of 5.8. So he's a first week boot who definitely made his mark known as he tried to form a newbie alliance, was pretty good in the diary room, and you could tell that production enjoyed making fun of him and his bad reads and delusions with how they edited him. At number 24 is Michael from BB6 who has a diary room average of 5.83. I wasn't expecting him to be on the list as he only lasted two weeks and was very irrelevant in the first week. He did get into quite a bit of drama on his boot week, but that's really all that I have to say about him. But he is a part of the reason why the first two weeks seem so separate from the rest of the season. So there is a tie at 23rd and 22nd place with two people, Casey from Big Brother 11 and Megan from Big Brother 19, where they both have a diary room average of 6. I never got why Casey got so much focused, as he was only relevant when he was nominated post veto to be sent home. I think he's one of the first examples of production, confusing obnoxiousness for good diary rooms. Megan was the super fan that they wanted to be a major narrator, but her quit halted things, clearly. She was a calmer narrator than most of the list. So we have a 3 week tie for 19th, 20th, and 21st with Amanda from BB4, Parker from BB9, and Steve from BB20, who all have a diary room average of 6.2. So I'm shocked Amanda's on the list due to her being very boring, but she benefited from Scott's drama being the first to have sex in the house and BB4 having the second most diary rooms in a season. Parker was a part of the power couple that had the sole vote to evict and he was booted in the same week while also being in some drama. Steve is also another shocker since I always forget about his presence. Anyways, all of them are week 1 boots which is kind of circumstantial for the amount of diary rooms per average they got. At 18th is Ronnie from BB11 who has a diary room average of 6.31. I think some of his content was circumstantial since he had a very disastrous HOH in the second week and was nominated to be sent home in his fourth and final week. I don't think he was really good in the diary room, but he wasn't horrible. I honestly don't have much to say about him. At number 17 is Brian from BB10 who has a diary room average of 6.33. I feel like he was someone production really liked and wanted him to be the next Dr. Well of some sorts, hence giving him another chance to return in BB11 and even bringing him back a few times in BB10. But he just fell short due to overplaying and a lack of true game knowledge. Definitely someone who comes off as natural in the diary room and would have been a reliable narrator and presence had he lasted longer. At 16th is Scott from BB5 who has a diary room average of 6.54. People tend to forget how visible Scott was on the season, but I think people forget about it because he's just so overshadowed by Jace, who is a lot more visible and charismatic. I think a part of it is that there are more diary rooms in general during the season, but Scott was definitely a drama magnet and a lot of the narrative was focused on the four horsemen in the first half of the season. He didn't get as much because Jace was just more strategic as well. At number 15 is Mike from BB14, who has a 6.58 diary room average. I already covered him prior, so I'm not going to delve into him here. At number 14 is Swaggy from BB20, who has a diary room average of 7. 
they really didn't need to give Swaggy that much coverage, especially for someone who was booted second. But in my opinion, it just showed that his content was not situational or circumstantial, but they actively chose to give it to him. He was backdoored by Caitlyn in the second week and had a showmance with Bailey. If he lasted longer, I am sure he would have maintained his high visibility. At 13th is Devin from BB16 who has a diary room average of 7.36. I am not going to delve too much into this. Devin founded the Bomb Squad Alliance which ended up dominating the game and he ended up winning the HOH in the second week. All of his decisions were so rash so of course he needed a lot more narration in an attempt to make sense of it. He caused quite a bit of drama in the short time he was there, though he did essentially hide for the last week and a half before his demise. At 12th is Jen from BB9, who has a diary room average of 7.4. I think a majority of Jen's content was very circumstantial, since in her one week, gameplays wise, one week, in the game, since she was one of the power couple that got the solo vote and was also sent home in the same week. She was also a part of being a real life couple which caused her to be nominated but outside of that she was very messy so she probably gets a lot of screen time anyways. At 11 is Devon from BB17 who has a diary room average of 7.5. This one's pretty easy. Despite lasting two weeks in the game and really not being relevant in the gameplay of it, she is really great at diary rooms, especially compared to everyone else in her cast and was a huge drama magnet, so of course they were going to milk her for as much as they could. It's the sole reason why she even came back, despite being 16th place. Production admitted mid-season that they hated their boot order because most of the people they liked ended up being booted pre-jury. At 10th is Dominic from BB13 who has a diary room average of 7.6. So I know a decent amount of his visibility comes from being nominated in the second and third weeks and he only lasted 3 weeks so he was on the block for most of his duration. He did hook up with his future wife Danielle and was the most charismatic one of his alliance outside of Keith so him getting the narration makes sense. There is a three-way tie for 7th, 8th, and 9th with Allison from Big Brother All-Stars, Keith from BB13, and Glenn from BB18 who all have a diary room average of 8. I already covered Allison so not gonna delve into her here. Keith is a week 1 boot but there are others who aren't visible that went in the first week so that isn't an alibi for him being so high. He does have a huge personality and the producers wanted to capture that clearly. Glenn's content is sorely circumstantial because of the day one twist boot, just like another person who was on this list. At number 6 is Eric from BB6 who has a diary room average of 8.56. A part of me thinks that a decent amount of his content was circumstantial and he might not have continued getting this amount of coverage had he made it further into the season. But he did get a lot of coverage in the first week when he didn't need to. He lasted 3 weeks, was HOH in the second week and sent home in the third week while getting in a lot of drama during that time. There was a very notable shift in the season when he was in the game and from when he is booted onwards. At number 5 is Scott from BB4 who has a diary room average of 9. I really wasn't expecting him to be on the list for being one of the most visible pre-jurors. I know he got into it quite a bit with Amanda and there was some talk about his alliance back during him but nothing came of it. He was a strong presence but I didn't think he would be this high. But I think out of all the seasons that has a sequestered jury, Big Brother 4 has the most diary rooms overall by a significant margin so I think that pushed him up. At number 4 is Frenchie from BB23 who has a diary room average of 9.14. In my opinion, Frenchie got so many confessionals and is this high because he lasted 2 weeks and he was either HOH or on the block to be sent home and he was very messy with his gameplay. Due to that, 
it gave him even more narration, especially since there needed to be some attempt to make sense of some of his decisions. Overall, I do think a lot of it was circumstantial, but I think he would have had some sort of a presence even if he wasn't H or H or on the block, or had he lasted longer. At number 3 is Kesar from BB6, who has a diary room average of 9.27. Kesar is high for some of the same reasons as another person who I have yet to discuss, where despite being a pre-juror, the pre-jury of the season was essentially the Kesar show, especially since everything revolved around him. I do think some of it is more situational, since he was nominated or HOH for all but one of the weeks he was available, and we saw his invisibility in All Stars. Overall, his likability and relevance is why he made it so high. At second is Jace from BB5, who has a diary room average of 9.69. There is a reason why BB5 is widely considered the Jace show, despite him being a pre-juror. Almost everything came back to him one way or another, and he's a messy drama magnet who is also very good at narration and diary rooms. I knew he would be high, but I wasn't too sure that he was going to be this high. I think it's because the older seasons have more DRs in general, and despite his low placement, it makes sense why he was a lock for All-Stars. At number one is Cameron from BB19, who has a diary room average of 12. This is clearly circumstantial, since he was only in the game for an episode, and the twist that the day one twist was set up as in this season forced him to get off this content. I barely even counted him, and for people who were in more than one episode, Jace clearly would have been number one. I don't even know if he would have been a large presence without this twist, as he came off quite awkward in the diary room. So that is my list, and I got this information from a Reddit and Twitter user named Ariel Meme, who does all the diary rooms for all BB Ken and BBUS seasons, as well as the spin-offs, so credit to them. It was interesting kind of going through the numbers and analyzing whether those numbers were given because they had to or because production really liked them and wanted to show them off. It's going to be interesting to see who is going to be on the other end being the least visible pre-jurors.